In this video, I'm going to walk you through deploying a powerful open source MQTT broker called EMQX on a Raspberry Pi single board Linux computer. I'll also show you how to connect the MQTT X test client to the EMQX broker. EMQX is the most feature rich, secure, and reliable MQTT broker available as both an open source project and as a managed cloud service. If you're unfamiliar, MQTT stands for Message Queuing Telemetry Transport. It's a robust messaging protocol with the publish and subscriber model, using topics to define where messages are coming from or going to. The MQX open source MQTT broker can be run on any system. Here I'm running it from my laptop and accessing the dashboard. For a home automation or industrial application, you may want to run your broker on a standalone device that runs on low power. This is where the Raspberry Pi comes in. EMQX has a build release for ARM 64-bit, which is compatible with the newer models of the Raspberry Pi, such as the Pi 3 or the Pi 4. To begin, you'll need a Raspberry Pi 4, a micro SD card with at least 8GB of memory, and a sufficient USB-C power supply. You will also need to download and install the Raspberry Pi imager for your operating system. With the Raspberry Pi imager open, the first thing you need to do is choose an operating system. Select the Raspberry Pi OS full version for 64-bit. Then select the SD card that you've plugged into your machine. And before writing the image to the SD card, click on the settings icon so that we can configure a few things to allow us to remotely access the Raspberry Pi over SSH to administer the necessary commands to install and run EMQX. You'll want to set a host name this will allow you to find your Raspberry Pi on the network without knowing its IP address. Here I set it to EMQX. We also need to en enable SSH. And we'll use a username and password. This can be anything that you like. Here you can also configure the wireless connection so that your Raspberry Pi, uh, by default, will connect to your network on first boot. Be sure to also set the country code to match your region. You can also set the time zone. Once these settings are to your satisfaction, click Save. Now we can write the image to the SD card that will go in the Raspberry Pi. This will take a few minutes. Once you see this message, it means that the Raspberry Pi image has been successfully written to the SD card. You can remove the SD card and close the Raspberry Pi imager. With the image successfully written to the SD card, insert it into the back of the Raspberry Pi in the SD card slot. Then plug in your USB-C power supply. You should see lights to indicate that it is now active. In this next step, we're going to remotely access the Raspberry Pi using SSH. It should be plugged in, on, and connected to the network by now. You can use any terminal application that suits your operating system. Uh, for OS X, I use iTerm2. For Windows, you might use PuTTY. For iTerm, we type in the command SSH, the username that we created on the Raspberry Pi, at its hostname, emqx.local. This will find it on our network. It's asking to verify authenticity by having us store a fingerprint for the Raspberry Pi. Let's say yes, and now type in the password. In this case, the password was password. Now we're logged in to the Raspberry Pi over SSH. Here we can run some commands. The command that we want to run is the command necessary to download and install the EMQX build for Debian operating systems. The Raspberry Pi OS is built on a Debian distribution of Linux. So navigate to emqx.io slash downloads, select the Debian tab, and copy this first command. This uh, adds the EMQX repository to the apt package manager. So we copy that, paste this in to the terminal, hit enter. This should now run a couple of different commands to get your Raspberry Pi ready to install EMQX. Once that command has completed, on to the next command. This will use apt-get to install EMQX from the package manager. So we copy and paste that. This will take a few moments. We'll copy this last command from the downloads page that says sudo system control start emqx. And we'll copy that into the terminal and hit enter. 
With EMQX now running on the Raspberry Pi, we can access its dashboard by navigating to emqx.local colon 18083, the port at which it's being served. The default credentials are admin with password public. It also now will request you to change the password to something more secure. Here I tried to use a non-secure password and it rejected it. So we'll add a number and a special character. We are now logged into the dashboard for EMQX running on the Raspberry Pi. Immediately, you're given a cluster overview. In this case, there's only the one node which is running on the Raspberry Pi. The UX instance will run on boot on your Raspberry Pi. There's a number of things you can do from the dashboard, such as manage authentication, monitor, set rules, and create data bridges, look at topic metrics, and access API keys and users. For our purposes, we're going to create a new user so that we can use the MQTTX client to securely connect to this EMQX broker. Go to the authentication page. From the top right, click on Create. Create a new password-based authenticator. Click Next. Use the built-in database, as we're not using an outside database at the moment. Here we set username, password hash, and salt position. Leave those to default and click Create. We've now created a new password-based authenticator. Now to test using this MQTT broker, we're going to use the MQTTX client. But to connect, we'll need a new user on this built-in database. From the right side, select Users. Click on the plus sign to add a new user. Give it a username and password. Now click Save. The user is now created. Next, navigate to mqttx.app and download and install the client for your platform. Once open, we'll create a new connection. There are plenty of options here, but we only need to fill out a few. First, give it a name just so that you can organize it better. We can leave the client ID to the one that's generated. This is just so that we can differentiate connected clients from logs. For the host address, type in emqx.local or whatever host name you've used for your Raspberry Pi. Next, enter in the credentials for the user that we created in the built-in database and simply click connect. We're now successfully connected to the broker. Now to test that this is publishing messages, we can publish the default message here to the topic local. If we return to the dashboard and go to cluster overview, we'll see that we have one active connection. Now that we know that we've published a single message, we can go over here on the left side of the menu to topic metrics. Now we can add a topic that we'd like to monitor. So we published to the topic local slash. Now any new messages we publish to that topic will be logged here. So let's publish a message again a few times. And if we refresh the page, we see we have two incoming messages on that topic. We can view a little bit more information about it as well. Let's take this a little bit further and create a second connection and have these two clients speak to each other. To create a second connection, we also need to create another user. So going back to the menu for authentication under the built-in database, add another user. And click Save. Return to the MQTTX client. Click on the plus sign to create a new connection, same as we did before. Setting the host name, the username, and password. And clicking Connect. 
and on this client, create a new subscription to a topic using the default topic, test topic slash pound sign. This means that any subtopic under test topic will be subscribed to. Click confirm. Now go back to the first client we connected and here at the bottom where we send test payloads, change the topic to test topic slash one and set your message to whatever you would like. Click on the send button. We now see that the second client received that message because it was subscribed to a catch-all for the test topic namespace. And likewise, we can publish from this client as well and subscribe with the other client. And this way you have two-way communication between your devices, as well as being able to subscribe to them from many other devices or publish from other devices. And through the EMQX dashboard, you can bridge that data to a, another MQTT instance or another broker or through webhooks. The docs on emqx.io also walk you through connecting to your emqx broker using various languages such as Python, Go, Java, C, or JavaScript. This way you can create various applications that can talk through MQTT to your other devices. For example, you could create a web app that can control your lights or display your sensor data. Since MQTT is a long-standing protocol in the IoT space, there's a number of devices that can connect to an MQTT broker, such as an ESP8266 or an ESP32 and various other Arduino-compatible devices. And there's plenty of documentation throughout the internet for doing as such. If your solution doesn't require an on-premises device with a self-managed EMQX broker, you can go to emqx.io and click Try EMQX Cloud and deploy a serverless or dedicated instance of EMQX with a lot more powerful features. You can also download the open source version of EMQX Enterprise, which is limited in the number of connections you can use, but it gives you a good window into what it's like using our paid managed service of EMQX Cloud. Also, be sure to regularly check the emqx.io blog where we'll post about new videos and guides. You can also select the community tab and join us on Slack, on GitHub, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and our forum. And also learn about new events and webinars that we'll be doing. To recap, we've deployed an emqx MQTT broker on a Raspberry Pi 4 running on the local wireless network. And then we use the MQTTX client to test connecting two clients using username password authentication to the EMQX broker, one to publish messages and one to subscribe. This is the foundation to creating powerful IoT applications. We hope you'll follow our next videos, which will walk in more in depth with EMQX and how to connect different devices and create different types of applications. Be sure to subscribe and thank you for watching.